people of God. Listen, I want to tell you something. There's a difference between relationship and religion. You see, what we see a lot is people have religious activities, right? And they don't have a relationship with God. They can keep the Sabbath, whether it be every Saturday or whether it be, you know, on Friday evening to Saturday evening or whether it be on Sunday, you know, regardless of when our brothers and sisters uh, have elected to keep the Sabbath. And just to say Sabbath wasn't, man wasn't made for the Sabbath, the Sabbath was made for man. But they can keep the Sabbath every week traditionally and still don't have a relationship with God, still don't know God. And what brought me to this is, see, when you know God and you really walk with him and you ain't trying to play no games, you really walk with him and crucify in this flesh, right? Sometimes it will piss you off when you see people come at you, even if they are elders sometimes, or even just who it is. They have that form of godliness. They have that religious spirit, but they don't, they ain't walking that thin path. And when they older than you, they should already know better. And what brought me to that is, you know, there's an elder, and, you know, he's, he doesn't disrespect me or anything, but his spirit, he's not disciplined in the spirit. And he asked me, he said, did you go to church this morning? I said, no, I worked this morning. You know, he said, oh, what'd you do? I said, oh, I just did my work around the house, you know, all my chores outside. And, you know, I rotated the tires on my truck. And I told him pretty much everything I had to do. I said, I got done early. He said, well, you did all that? I said, yeah. He said, I'm proud of you. I said, thank you. I said, uh, I celebrated my Sabbath yesterday. He said, oh, okay. And, uh, and he said, so... Uh, you know, you, what you do for fun? I said, here, I'm here relaxing, you know, boosting up my tight muscles and stuff like that. Just relaxing myself. I was, you know, enjoy my steam session. We were steam room. And he said, I don't see how you do it, baby. He said, I said, see how I do what? He said, you see me. All these years, you ain't had no kids. He said, you ain't out here sleeping around, having sex. He said, I don't see how you do it. I said, see how I do what? Not have sex. He said, sex is a relaxing more than this thing. He said, you love God and I love God. I don't see why we can't make it. You know, you can be my wife. Now, mind you, he over doubled my age. And he then been divorced because he messed up the marriage years ago. Now, I said, you don't see how I can do it. I said, you just asked me if I went to church this morning. I said, I told you I didn't go. Saturday is my Sabbath. I said, but what's the purpose of going to church if you're not learning how to walk in the Spirit? I said, don't the Bible say, don't Paul say, if we walk by the Spirit, we will not satisfy the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, right? Yeah, 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 you're right. I said, now you, you, you're older than me. You're my elder. I said, you should know this, right? I said, so what do you mean you don't know how I can do it and why does the conversation have to come back in your mind about sex again because you already had asked me that last week see what I'm saying I ain't gonna keep having that conversation with no man two times in a row is enough it shouldn't have been had the first time because that's nearly your business but you're supposed to be an elder in Christ and in God right and so therefore if you know the Lord the Lord tells us in his word. What does the Lord tell us in his word? That we shall do what? Flee fornication, right? And so if we are going, what is the purpose of us having a, these religious, um, attending these religious practices and not learning anything or not growing in the spirit? Because if you're going, to, you know, you just came from your service this morning and you came here this where your mind go back at to somebody? And I said, not only that, you, did, you didn't put your wife away for adultery. You messed up. So therefore, you messed up and you get think you can go and repeat that with someone who's walking pure. You don't get to do that. Well, how you know God ain't, you know, um, God ain't telling us that here's the manipulation. See what I'm saying? What does the Bible say about manipulation? I said, tell me if I'm wrong. The Bible say manipulation is that of what? witchcraft right yeah you are right. i said so you have to discipline yourself i said what i would do so what you expect somebody to do if i repent and i tell god i'm sorry 
I said, yeah, it's okay if you repent. But when you repent, you should be more disciplined in your spirit. I said, what I see is you ain't able to control your flesh yet. I said, that's why we have so many people falling to the sicknesses, the diseases of the flesh, because we're really, a lot of us ain't disciplined our flesh. So therefore, the flesh is leading you, and the flesh leads you to nowhere but destruction. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, right? And so you can repent for your mistakes. You don't have to carry that over your head, but you ain't walking after the spirit. You ain't walking after the spirit with that on your mind, talking to a young girl like that, you know? And so, and this is a follow-up from the previous conversation that has already been had. So I know what spirit is there, you know? And I said, so when you repent, you need to surrender to God wholeheartedly. And when you surrender to God wholeheartedly, you got to take a look in the mirror. And if you want your wife, if you want to be married again, you should go back and make things right with that woman that you left with that marriage that you abandoned because it was about you wanting to jump from place to place and she got tired of you she was there i said she gave it you know but I, I kept i did i kept moving and then, you know i followed my career and then she she got tired of me i said okay so she gave herself to you she wanted you she wanted what she wanted you had a house you were stable you were stationary when you wanted to move she did it one time you know but then you kept going it kept going who wants to keep moving like that you know and so you can't blame nobody for wanting you, but not wanting to keep jumping and being from stable this year and unstable the next year. Stable this year, and then, okay, now, oh, I got to, you know, they calling me out here to Arizona. Oh, they want me to go over here. Well, those are things that she should have thought about before getting married and not blaming the one that you left because what it looked like is selfish ambition. And when I look at the, you know, what's going on with them, the selfish ambition is still there you know and so these are things people of god having a relationship with god it starts to make you hate sin it starts to make you hate the spirits that come to entice us into sin and let me repeat not human beings there's no human being in this earth i hate you see what i'm saying but the spirits that come to entice us and pull us and draw us off of this thin line i hate those spirits god want us to hate sin and hate evil right and so the more and more we draw closer to him and his light shines through us we don't have to get angry with people when we see them spirits on us but we can tell them and tell them boldly what we need to tell them everything that comes to our spirit and stand out with God and I told you the more sure that we walk when you walk pure and you keep your temple pure you're going to see a lot of people are attracted to you both sexes, men and women. If you're a man, you're going to have men and women. If you're a woman, you'll have men and women attracted to you. Sometimes they'll be attracted to your spirit. Sometimes they'll be attracted to you in a perverse way. They're attracted to you sexually. They, you know, they just have their flesh. It's just craving you. And when you're disciplined in your spirit, you'll be able to discern those things. But don't play with lust. I heard a brother that said this brother calls himself a prophet. And he said, sometimes people will be attracted to you, use to your advantage. That is terrible advice. That's what happens sometimes on these jobs. And that's why when you're on these jobs, sometimes those of you who just go there to do your job and you want to go back home, that's why you experience all of that messiness and witchcraft in the workplace because people have let their flesh take over. You have supervisors sleeping where they supported it. You have people up top sleeping with people at the bottom. And the people at the bottom, them young girls, sometimes come in there and just use what they got to get what they want and then you see them come in there they get promoted over the little Estes <laughs> they get promoted over somebody who trained them and you got way more experience than them and you see them shooting up your supervisor and they ain't really how to know how to do their job but because of the person up top they sleeping with have that worldly authority in that workplace but what they'll do is they'll put them as a supervisor over people who know what they're doing to try to protect them so the people that are working under them kind of already know how to do their job and they can learn off of their subordinates but really, that's not how things should be. See, that's what happens when people learn, walk by the flesh and not by the spirit. And they get into these positions. They are bad ambassadors. They let their flesh rule them. But anyway, let me get back to my little second session. I'm doing a lot of swimming, steam room sessions, back and forth. I get in there. Once I get hot, I go and dive in the pool and get my swim on. When I get out my swim, I get back. Just enjoying myself. I didn't finish all my work for the day. I had some chicken that I seasoned on um, Saturday. Uh, I got a big pack of chicken wings from Sam. There's so much in a the pack. That pack probably lasts me 
until next month sometimes because I don't I don't eat that much at a time. I'll sometimes I'll cook enough so I have to take a work for me like tomorrow. But I seasoned them Saturday um, evening. Saturday evening I season them and I like for my meat whenever I season my meats and stuff, I like for them to sit like at least um, 24 to 72 hours. Really 48 to 72 hours because the, the season it penetrates all through the meat and you know so it's like when I used to grill and stuff I don't really grill out that much because I have that air fryer now but I used to grill right there in my backyard I got small little grills and stuff I don't have to make a big mess because it's usually just meat but when I used to grill and stuff instead of using barbecue sauce like I didn't really want barbecue sauce because I like the way my meat tastes the way I had the seasoning you just could taste it it was so flavorful but um, even in the air fryer with no cooking oil, I don't even, um, I know some of you, you, uh, you're saying how do you get the, uh, the skin to look like it was fried? Well, I, I've done it both ways. I, I put them in there and the skin comes out so crisp without any batter or anything like that and it's still good. But if you want that fried look, because um, it's still going to taste fried either way, but if you want that fried look, and the outside looking like it, you just took it out the frying pan. There's a called a uh, it's a chicken batter. It's an air fry batter. I forgot the name. Of it. I think that's what it is. it's in a blue pack. The one I use, and they got different. They got different types. But you can get that type of batter. And you just take once you have your chicken seasoned right before you get ready to put it in. You just you know flip it in there, get to get the batter on there really really good. And then you put that in your air fryer. And there's some oil, some spray oil that you can get. Um, you can get the uh, coconut. I, I have coconut spray oil at the house. I don't know if you can buy spray olive oil, spray it up, spray oil, or uh, you know avocado spray oil. I had some avocado spray oil too. So whatever type of spray oil you like to use, avocado and, and soy um, olive oil is good as well. Coconut oil is good. So you get your spray oil, and what you do is you put it in there, and um, once you put it in there. You, you, you spray the side that's facing the air fryer uh, that, that where the heat comes down spray that side really well so make it wet and then close your air fryer set it let it go and then once it goes for about half the time so so my new air fryer my old air fryer could fry chicken wings in like 25 minutes my new air fryer the preset temperature is like 350 and it does it in 40 minutes and so I will let it go. You can let it go for 20 minutes or half the time, whatever your time is. And then you open the air fryer and don't stop the timer. Just open it halfway through. And then you, you'll see it's, it looks fried. But spray it some more and then flip it the other side. Um, and then spray that side as well. Let it be wet. And then put it back in and let it finish. And when you take it out, you'll have what looks like a fried chicken wing that came right out of the frying pan. <laughs> but it'll just be air fried more healthier anything more he healthier and everything so anyway um have a blessed day you know relationship with god is better than religion all right that's just my little two cents y'all have a blessed day